The new version of IO is absolutely ridiculous, and yes, I'm talking about Helm of the Dominator and MKB IO. Now, a lot of people might be saying, Speed, what about patch 7.27a? Both of these items got nerfed. It doesn't matter. Guys, it does not matter. IO farms nearly as fast as an alchemist. This hero farms way too fast. Look at this example here. Now, surely IO is 12 and 1, but we have a Morphling. A Morphling, a hero that naturally farms fast due to his high base damage, if he shifts to agility, is 5 and 0 and has 12,410 net worth. And IO, sure it is 12 and 1, but that, that does mean it has a death, is at 16,550 net worth. And particularly if we go into the match here and we skip ahead to about that same time, what we're going to see is that the IO's last hits is off the charts. This is at 20 minutes basically exactly. The IO has 263 last hits, 100 above the Morphling. So if you're curious on how to farm this fast in your game as well, and you want to cheese out some free MMR with one of the most underrated mid heroes of this patch, like and subscribe to help our channel grow, and also like for good luck in your upcoming IO games. Also, sign up to the Game League website. If you want more content like this, you want more like giga educational stuff, where I go super in depth uh, about each hero and, and, and positioning, play calling, everything like that, like everything about Dota, you know, consider signing up. It's, I think it's relatively cheap. It's, in my opinion, great value for what you're paying. I really do believe that. All right, so let's hop right into it. Io is a hero that doesn't necessarily win lane, but it does okay. Just make sure that you're using your spells in lane. Use the spirits to secure creeps, Use the tether to help buff up creeps as well, and most importantly, use the overcharge to give yourself max health regen, right? Just heals you up. Other than that though, what you're going to want to do, especially when you're playing on the dire side like this, you're going to want to draw out this creep camp, pull it over to the one on the right, and of course, you should have stacked these earlier. I'm not going to tell you how to stack in this video, it's something that I've talked about in the past. Just make sure that you pull camps together, use the spirits to basically farm them up, auto attack the highest HP large creep, and that's about it. On top of that, we're going to see a really cool efficiency play come out. Clearly, you can see that Cast on the IO is popping a clarity right now. And what he does with this clarity is he actually allows himself to get to relocate. So he sees this Pangolier coming, but that's fine. He pops out relocate and sends himself back to base. This is basically the same thing as an Ember Spirit or a Kunkka who can either XTP back to base or Remnant TP back to base. And IO with his bottle should do the same exact thing. And really, this is just about all you do. You just pull the camps together and farm them. And that's why generally I recommend if you're going to try out this strategy, you do it on Dire. It's just a little bit more convenient than the Radiant side, right? Obviously, it's much harder to pull this camp to this camp and this camp to this camp. So if you do plan on picking this IO, I highly recommend you just wait to pick it on, on Dire if you have the opportunity. And yeah, the, the fun begins right when you get this Helm of the Dominator creep. Now, this strategy when it first came out was even more broken. Obviously, MKB and Helm of the Dominator were even cheaper, but it doesn't really matter. This creep still makes you run with the help of a buffed up tether, currently 446. And this is not a maxed out tether, it's level 1 tether. He's running at 446 movement speed. Do you know how fast that is? Look, the, the Enchantress tries to stomp him, but she completely misses. Is it surprising? No, absolutely not, because he's so fast and he nearly solo kills her. On top of that, we're going to see a really cool play. He actually stops moving with his hero, lets the Helm of the Dominator creep run ahead here, and then re-tethers it to actually get past the tether. Unfortunately, the Enchantress, <laughs> the Enchantress goes for the Enchant onto the Helm Dom creep. He steals it back and secures the kill. And yeah, the really cool thing about this version of IO, or I should specifically say Helm Dominator IO, is that the Helm Dominator creep gets 4 mana regen and 12 HP regen. So this creep just doesn't die. When you're jungling, it's always going to tank all the damage and it's always going to have spells, especially if it's a Hellbear Smasher, because if you guys know Hellbear Smashers, its spell, its active, does 150 damage on a 12 second cooldown for only 50 mana, which means you have unlimited Hellbear Smashes. That's obviously insane for farming. And we can even see here that he tries to take Ancients. Now, why can he do this? I think the main reason is because he's able to buff up his creeps so hard. Anytime you're farming a camp with this version of IO, just pop overcharge off cooldown. It's the best way to farm fast. It gives you 80 attack speed, and it clearly gives this creep an insane amount of health regen, which I actually quickly want to show to you guys. 24.4 right now. Pretty insane, right? Yeah, it is. It's, it's ridiculous. Also, he has an Iron Talent. I've been stressing this for a while, I still think Iron Talon is like the best tier 1 item in the game for any hero that is trying to farm the jungle. And now because he's taken this ancient stack, he all of a sudden is top net worth by actually a thousand gold. Guys, a thousand gold. Now I will say that he has had his team make some stacks for him. The majority were, I think, made by himself. 
But do keep that in mind. If you're going to play this version of IO, try to do it in a party queue game. If you're playing solo queue, that's all right. Just let your team know that it would help you out if they can make some ancient stacks and remind them. It's a big thing that people forget to do. Guys, if you want your team to make stacks, you have to tell them more than once. People forget. They're not perfect and don't expect them to be. All right, coming here, I just want to show you the pure DPS that Io can do. Now, in this case, he does have a double damage, so I'm not going to try to trick you. It's, it's not this high all the time, but you can see he brings the creep over. The creep starts smashing him for about 60 damage apiece. With the overcharge attack speed, he's just clubbing down this Earthshaker. And of course, on top of that, he has a spirit's damage. On top of that, I can't help but to note that the hero has a 35 damage talent. Like, it, it, that's just so strong. 35 damage on a hero that naturally gets 140 attack speed? Like, it, what other hero gets that? It, it doesn't exist. Following that up, guys, please, if you're going to try this out, buy clarities. You need a ton. You Like, you need at least 7 or 8 clarities per game. Uh, you have to be spamming your W and E off cooldown if you're trying to maximize your efficiency, and this is the way to go, because as you can see, it's going to allow him to stay on par with a Morphling who is 2-0, right? This is a Morphling having a free farm game, and my man is a higher level than him. That is ridiculous. That won't happen in your average pub, trust me. And now, <laughs> for my favorite part, this just, honestly, this hurts my brain. Like, looking at this just, it legitimately hurts my brain. But at the 13 minute mark, and 42 seconds, Io. After the nerfs to Helm Domin and, and MKB, has gotten a 13 minute and 42 second Helm of the Dominator and MKB. It's not like you're squishy. It's not like he's easy to kill. He's not a glass cannon because he has Helm Dom stats. He has this heal as well. What is the weakness of this Io? Honestly, I don't think there is a clear weakness other than the fact that you have to farm for a long time. So if you plan on playing this Io, just make sure you spend a long time farming. You can see he has 155 CS at the 14 minute mark, which is typically what players have at like the 21 or 22 minute mark. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that you're some sort of a specter. It's a bit weird because if you do relocate in, then obviously you can't have your Helm Dom creep with you, which stinks a little bit, but you can always tether to one of your teammates and split up the map. This is very useful for uh, just pressuring side lane towers, forcing rotations, and everything else that split farming usually does. And you can see that coming to play here. He sees the fight break out. He realizes that his team is going to initiate. The Legion begins to run in because of that. He's going to immediately relocate on the outside of the fight. Obviously, you do not want to go in the middle. You want to stay on the outside of the fight with this version of Io. Comes in, tethers up the Legion, gives the Legion 140 attack speed, and they slay out completely. And you can see the damage here onto the Venomancer, shreds him, and Enchantress, a hero that usually can't be auto-attacked, instantly dies to Cass's Io. And I would like to say that I think uh, the Dyer's team comp in general is perfectly designed around this mid Io. They have a safe laner that doesn't necessarily need to take a lot of farm in the Vengeful Spirit. In fact, the Vengeful Spirit with the Io is a beautiful combo. I love this so much. Minus armor, a swap out to save the Io, the Vengeance Aura extra range and primary attribute. Remember, Io is a strength hero. That gives him 260 HP. So you get bonus attack range, 260 HP, 13 damage. And on top of that, we have control, right? Io has no proper control. You could get a creep, but it's mediocre, right? Very mediocre. So they have a legion, duel, stun, swap, lift, stomp, and you have the natural order base armor reduction. So this team comp overall is just beautifully designed in my opinion. And it doesn't surprise me that uh, they, they end up just getting to the point where they run over the enemy team. <laughs> Alright guys, this, this next fight, this next fight, man, it is, this is so funny. <laughs> it's actually so funny. Like, you just watch this ball stand still and hit people for like half their health in a quarter of a second. So, the Rubik just ended up going down, so you're like, oh, maybe he should just back off, wait for the Rubik to respawn. But nah, Cass doesn't care, walks in, turns on his E, and just auto attacks the Pango, and look at this damage. I know it's slowed down a little bit, right, this is half speed, but half HP! That was half of the guy's health, and he hit him like four times. Like, what is that? Also, he gets pressed the attack here, and... <laughs> oh my god, poor Veno. I don't even think he's that squishy. He has a vessel. My man has a vessel, and he's just getting like three shot. On top of that, the Pango rolls in. You know, he wants to use his ulti, right? Try to help out with the team fight. Cass pops his BQB, and he has to roll all the way home. It's just... This is just so funny, and you might be like, Speed, this is a meme. No, it's not. I actually think that pros are going to be doing this. I'm pretty convinced this will become popular because it does not seem balanced in my opinion. Look at the net worth at this point. A 3k net worth lead against a Morphling who is 3-0. How do you build 3k net worth against a hero that is 3-0 with no deaths and farms faster than most heroes in Dota? It's just ridiculous.
And like the pure damage that we're going to see coming out onto the Enchantress here just really goes to prove my point. Now sure, the Enchantress only has 860 health, usually Enchantress relies on her heal and her ultimate to prevent herself from getting bursted, but nonetheless, I mean just look at this, right, just look at this. With the natural order coming out with the uh, armor reduction, I mean, uh, she died in less than a second. It, it was even less than a half a second, I would argue. On top of that, I would like to mention that he takes the tome here. Uh, he is going to be going Ags after his BKB. I'm not actually sure I agree with this, I'll be honest. I watched it, and the reason why you want to buy Ags around this timer after the BKB is because if you take the Tome as well, you're going to be able to synergize your Ags timing with your level 20, 60 spirits hero damage and your level 15, 325 spirits max range. So it does make sense why he's doing this, right? It makes complete logic. Uh, however, I do think you can full commit to the right click build and go something like a Satanic or even a Scotty. I looked at this game and I'm like, hmm. Maybe a Scotty would have been really cool against the Morphling this game, reducing his heal by 40%, his attack speed by 50, and his movement speed as well by 50. Upcoming in this next clip, there's a couple of replay bugs, but I do just want to show off the level 25 talent as well. I'll also be going over his brief spell casting, but honestly, it's ridiculously straightforward. As long as you buy a BKB after your Helmdom MKB, you're going to be able to just frontline and stand still and auto attack people. That's that's literally all you do. Also, he has a Titan's liver, pretty nice item for, for this version of Io. Of course. So he gets gone on. The Earthshaker obviously wants to try to burst him before he can get off his BKB, but a great pressy attack from Legion comes out. He tethers over to Devenge. And if you guys don't know what the level 25 talent is, it's attack tethered allies targets. So anytime Devenge hits someone, the IO will also hit them. And it doesn't affect your attack time, right? It's just a side attack. And you can see this Veno, who has a, a Halberd, he's trying to deal with right click damage, is insta dying to right click damage. And it goes even further than this. The Pango tries to roll in, but they just literally auto-attack him to death. The swap comes out, and he's gone. Where did he go? He's not even going a squishy... Like, look at Pangolier's items. Guys, look... Imagine you're playing a pub, and they go glass cannon builds against you, and look at this Pangolier's items. He has a Solar Crest, a Flats, a Skull Basher, and a Repair Kit that gives him 25 HP regen, and he disappeared. Imagine if you're playing against people who don't buy defensive items against this. They won't even have a game. It's that good. And of course, you instantly Roshan. Like, actually, I'm going to play this in one time speed just so everyone can see actually how fast this is. So this is one time speed taking Roshan with Avenge here. This is one time speed. I'm not speeding this up. Press the attack. The Vlads, the drums, the allied targets. Oh my god. It took them like five seconds. And this is of course where the game just about ends. I kind of just want to show this off so you guys can try it and give you a general guideline of what to do. I know this wasn't some crazy in-depth guide, but hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, you know, you understand the overall guideline. We're going to look at one more fight and him taking the base only because it's 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 very fascinating to see an IO kill the base at the rate that he's going to. But let's check it out. So yeah, just a little relocate mid. And as you can see, when he tethers up the Venge, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't even have to say much, clearly. I hope you guys are definitely convinced at this point of the pure potential of this. It's not a meme. Clearly, I mean, uh, literally, OG was picking a version of IO Core in the past. You know, the Ags build, sure, it's not viable anymore. Helmdom has been changed, but this version of it is, is genuinely ridiculous. All you have to do is jungle. You can even lose your lane, and as long as you understand how to jungle, which you can easily figure out by either just watching this video again or just searching up on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, the uh, IO gameplay, like mid-IO gameplay, you're going to pop off. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, honestly, <laughs> there goes the Morph Link. <laughs> oh my gosh, all this items for what? But thanks for watching. I hope you guys genuinely enjoyed. I love this. I love this, uh, this uh, version of IO. It's so cool. And I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. Before you leave, just want to say a quick message. If you're trying to get better at Dota or you just enjoyed that video, uh, I know this is pretty general. And you're going to hear this quite a bit from me, but I recommend you sign up to GameLink.com. Why? Because I put a lot of effort into the content over there, and generally the effort I do there is different from the content you're going to see here on YouTube. It is different. In fact, I usually go a lot more in depth on topics or into niche topics that help you get to the next level even faster. Because on YouTube, I, I often have to keep it more mainstream, and that's even why I'm putting it at the end of this YouTube video. That's why this is at the end, because a lot of people just watch five minutes, they skip through just for like the dopamine spike. But if you are interested in actually getting better at Dota, I recommend you go to the description down below, get your discount right now by clicking the link, sign up, use the discount code that you're going to see there. And I hope to see you there right now. So click it and uh, yeah, thanks for watching.